All right, so everyone has a copy of our of the handouts uh, for today. Um, now there was actually four readings that I had today, but um, so I've split it up into two days. Uh, today we've got these two books, uh, excerpts from uh, Die Twice and excerpts from The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, and then uh, tomorrow or sorry on Tuesday we'll be doing uh, two new two other excerpts. Um, uh, I believe, uh, so what were they again? Of Mice and Men and Animal Farm. Um, so I looked over the, uh, the excerpts for today and I thought, you know, in terms of synthesis, because we've been talking about synthesis and comparing, comparing, uh, comparing works, I think that there's some pretty, to me anyways, pretty obvious grounds on which we might compare these two. Uh, does anyone know, uh, when you look at these two covers, uh, what stands out to you? Anything? Yep. Die Twice um, has a cover that represents, politically, the stereotypically uh, mature, tough guy uh, stereotype. Um, and formally, there is the big typeface yep. and the um, in-your-face picture of the gun there and it says a thriller so you know that it's about it's plot driven it's about um, action and the characters are supposed to be grown up all right plot driven meaning um for those of you who aren't familiar with that word, meaning that uh, what, draw, what, 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 moves the plot, what moves the book along is that is just the plot itself. Like this happens and this happens and this happens, and that's kind of where the, where the interest comes from. It's the plot as opposed to the character, a character-driven piece. So, yeah. And how about The Sisterhood of Traveling Pants? Victoria. It's obviously a girl team book about friendship and being plus very girly and funny. And what else? Friendship and? Um, I just you can tell it's a probably a team book. And yep. All right. So yeah. So obviously, from the from the from the from the, from the, out, from the get go here, we have a pretty obvious comparison, a pretty obvious contrast. We have the guy book and we have a girl book. Have you ever, is there any words for that sort of thing? Girl books? Anyone heard of a... a, a chick lit. That's the word I'm looking for. Now, have you heard of this phrase, chick lit, before? Chick lit. Not chick lit like the candy. Chick. I don't even know how to spell it. Chick lit, perhaps. Chick lit. Chick flick. Yeah, chick flick is, would be a movie, right? And chick lit, as in lit as in literature will be for girls. Now, I don't know about this phrase exactly. Oh, thank you, Ms. Quelch. Um, I don't know, did you, but that's from Ms. Tapia, right? Yeah, yeah, the something desk is fine. And uh, do you need me to find something on for, for her? Because I have something, someone else's, apparently. I haven't even looked for it yet. Uh, okay. She okay. not worry about it, so. Okay, that's nice, thank you. So, yeah, we have this word chiclet, which seems a little derogatory, but then we have, but we have no such word for the guy book. No, there's no guy, the guy lit word. How about doodlet? Can we call it doodlet? All right, so you have doodlet over here. Now, that's not like a real thing. I just made that up. And the fact that it's not a real thing, I think, kind of might tell you something of the sexism that might still exist in our, in, in literary culture, that we have chiclet, chiclet, and we also have chick flicks. But there's no guy flick. There's no dude flick. I mean, we know that there are, but we call them different words. We call them action movies, right? Action movies are guy movies, presumably. Um, and here we have, so here you have a guy book and a girl book. So I thought that, I mean, I don't want to just say that guys are like, guys like this and girls like this. Obviously, like, this is not really my kind of thing. That's not my kind of thing either. But certainly, this whole idea of guy things and girl things, personally, like, my personal reaction to that, I've, it's always bugged me because... Whenever people say this is what guys like or this is what guys are like, I never see myself reflected in those kinds of characterizations, like liking cars and guns and 
and, you know, being a jerk who can't talk about your feelings and, you know, womanizing and all this kind of like stereotypes around guys. I never like have identified with that and it always made me feel, does that make me less of a guy? You know, I mean, I like things that, you know, I like all these other things, you know, like art and reading and, you know, things that people often associate with girls. Does that mean that I'm somehow less masculine? So it's always kind of made me uncomfortable. But still, nonetheless, I have to, I have to acknowledge that, yeah, there's this, there's this thing of, of guy stuff and girl stuff that you see out there. I've even saw, like, an advertisement for color. You know, some paint, have you seen, the, like, bus advertisements where there's some paint, it's an advertisement for paint, a billboard, and it's like, it, the, the, the point of the, of the advertisement is that they have this one paint company has special colors for guys because, because a guy doesn't want to buy tangerine orange. He wants to buy like, you know, like blood red or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly, you know. So it's, it's ridiculous. I'm like, what? That's, it, it bugs me. But anyways, um, so, but I think that this whole idea of typically male, typically female, whatever that means and however troublesome that is, I think this might form an interesting um, sort of focus for today's class in terms of comparing these two stories. So you all, you all have your groups, of course. We have our... What our, our 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 genre group obviously is going to be a lot for them. We've got the the diction group, we've got the plot group. What I want us to talk, think about is for your specific focus, in what way can you see those typical qualities or those those sort of um, gendered gendered meaning you know masculine and feminine gendered qualities? How is that reflected in your your group's focus? So for example. You know, as Stephanie pointed out, big typeface. So we have big, tough, okay, thriller. So some sort of excitement. Over here we've got, we have friendship. And you'll notice the colors, of course, are, are not quite so bold, right? So talking about the, these, these uh, covers a little bit, is there anything else we can add? We have bold colors on the cover. Whereas over here we have more kind of pastel colors, perhaps. Which are is that? Did I spell pastel right? Yeah. Which are, uh, tip, which are sort of the stereotype for the differences there. Did we, anyone see anything else? What's that? The font is what? Bold font. Big, you know, capital. It's kind of the same same idea. Of course, we have. The objects, what, what kind of objects do we have here? We've got a gun, and we have clothing. You know, pretty, pretty obvious gender thing going on there. All right, so let's take a look. Before we get into the actual uh, excerpts, let's look first at the analysis. And the analysis as well will help us to know what we're going to focus on. Um, could I get someone, this is the right class, right? Can I get someone to read the analysis out loud? That can be embarrassing if I have to read the analysis out loud. Yes? yes? Um, well, let, let me just go through it very quickly then. So I'm just going to point out a, a, few, a few things um, in brief. So The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants by Anne Brashers illustrates how four best friends, so we have the friendship aspect, four best friends spending their summer apart for the first time. A pair of magical pants help them bond while they are apart. In the prologue told by Carmen, she describes to the readers how inseparable the girls were. Girls were. Still, we managed to find one another for at least a few hours a day, and on the weekends, we were never apart. So you can see that thematically already, in terms of theme, what's the focus here? Friendship. Right, exactly. Bonding, being forced to be apart. And, and continuing on, so thematically, all right, important. So Carmen also paints a picture in the reader's mind about what the pants felt and looked like, what the pants felt and looked like. Uh, they were an essential kind of pants, jeans, naturally blue, but not that stiff, new blue, not that stiff new blue that you often see on the first day of school. So we have that note of teenage life there, as was pointed out already. The theme in this excerpt displays friendship between the girls and how they are all different from each other. Um, and then for the technique um, paragraph here, colloquial language. Um, and the examples are but. Okay, so important to note here, I mean, okay, but, 
So the so of course yeah, it's colloquial language, but it's also you know the reference to the butt. All right, body image. Okay, it, that, that's that's the, that's the con that's what we're, we're thinking about. Pants. How does my butt look? Okay, so body consciousness, right? Um, uh, God, spaghetti strap thing, sun in. Um, more, more another clothing word, spaghetti strap thing. So clothing is a focus, obviously. Um, so we might ask ourselves, in terms of the colloquial language, well, if this is colloquial language, then we might ask ourselves, does it portray the way, is it, does, it, does it sound like a female voice? And if it does sound like a female voice, what does a female voice sound like? Does it sound believable as a, as a female character? Does it sound like the kind of female character that, that you as a female, for those of you who are girls, would, would, would identify with? Or is it something that's a minute, maybe a little bit too stereotypical or too... Um, or that you reject in some way. Um, what are the qualities of that, that language? So first person point of view, so we see from her eyes, and there's personification, our pants weren't like the neurotic puppy whose parents left it alone. Uh, so you can see there's some humor being used here. Uh, the pants are happy just doing their basic job of covering your butt without making it look fatter than it actually is. So there's that body image, the clothing slash body image um, sort of theme that we were, that I, that we were mentioning. Um, all right, and then die twice. Well, let's start, let's pause there for, for for a moment. So let's look first at um, we'll look first at the sisterhood of the traveling pants. So for each group, what I want you guys to do is create a chart, something like this. Okay, hopefully neater. Mine's way too messy. Um, take a page, put a line down the middle, do lid on one side, chick lid on the other, or if you prefer, you can just write die die once, or sorry, die twice, and the sisterhood of the traveling pants. Put a line down the middle. Should I, should I make this? Oh, it's backwards now. Whatever. At any rate, chick lit on one side, doodle lit on the other side, and for your, your group's focus, try to ask yourself, in, in what way does that particular narrative feature reflect this sort of gendered, in this case, feminine quality? Is the plot feminine? Is the voice feminine? Are the characters feminine? And if so, what does that mean? What does it mean for a girl to be feminine or for a guy to be feminine or for a girl to be less than feminine, etc.? <laughs> Questions? Is this confusing to anybody? Pretty straightforward? All right, so let's, so let's take about 15 minutes first to read. It'll only take about 10 minutes to read, I think. And then in your group, come up with as many points as you can that try to, con that try to answer the question, in what way is, that, is your group's focus feminine or not so feminine? Okay? All right, 15 minutes.